So I just finished up my interview with real estate agent Mike Forty. He is a very, very good real estate agent in Rhode Island. He started in New York City, but in this interview, we really touch on getting started as a new real estate agent and that fear around going all commission, right? And then what you can do to kind of take the steps in order to get through that. And also finding your niche market. Mike found his niche market in multifamily commercial type of properties and he is doing incredible. On top of that, we also talk about marketing yourself and how he kind of found his niche and his marketing tools in order to become who he is because he does gain a lot of clients just from Instagram, social media to create that portfolio. So we touch on all of these really cool things and becoming a new real estate agent, but also becoming a successful real estate agent in your first year and how long it takes to find that success, start making money and how you can kind of expedite that process. So I hope you guys enjoy and find some value in this. Of course, in the show notes, if you're in podcasts or if you're on YouTube, you can find all of my information in the description, um, a free discovery call for my coaching with me, also my email if you want to reach out and have any questions. And if you're looking to get started as a real estate agent, use that link in the description to take the real estate course. It has multiple states on there. You can do it for almost any state. So... Let's check it out. Enjoy. Let's just jump right into it then. Right, tell, tell me a little bit about yourself. So, okay. So last time you and I spoke, when you were first started getting into real estate, I tried to hire you in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Remember? Yeah. You came to me and we had yeah. an interview. And um, that's when you were getting into it. Can you start there? Because I know that you started as a real estate agent like for a little while over there. Yeah, yeah. So um, I moved to New York City right after graduating. I actually had, I was offered a job in recruiting um, for my cousin's company uh, back like junior year of college. So I basically knew what I was going to be doing in New York during college. Um, I knew it was my, like my, 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 um, it was like my start in New York. I was going to figure it out from there, get there, start making money figure out what the next move was. I always knew I wanted to get into real estate. I just didn't want to start full-time, 100% commission right off the jump with like mm -hmm. super high expenses. I wasn't ready to take that jump. So uh, my plan was to go there, um, you know, get some experience in sales and do that kind of thing. Right. Well, I remember in New York, when you came to me, you're like, I'm sick of this nine to five stuff. I mean, the typical answer is, you know, you want freedom. You want to be able to work when you want to work because you want to and make as much money as you want to. Like there's no cap. Yeah. Right. And I remember you coming to me being like, you know, I like my job because it's fashion and, and it's cool how you took that journey and mixed it in because your whole like that's your marketing is like fashion mixed with food and wine mixed with real yeah, estate yeah. from the marketing that I see. And you're very good at marketing yourself because you've got a lot of followers and you've got Thank a lot you. of people. Yeah. And you get yeah. your clients from that. But I remember you saying, you know, you want to get out of that type of restricted space, although you liked your career, but you wanted something more free. Yeah, my, my background, wor honestly, like worked perfectly into real estate because my first job um, was executive recruiting. So I was recruiting C-suite level executives, um, you know, in the tech world, in management consulting. So these guys that I was recruiting for were like, the top of their class at what they did super smart guys making a ton of money so early on i was jumped in to chatting with these you know world class guys mm -hmm. and i had to build business acumen really fast i had to get good it was recruiting but it was sales you know you're you're selling a person and not a product so being nice. in that environment it's really difficult when you're trying to sell something that you can't just like pick off the shelf and present to somebody that person can walk away from you so it's a it's a really different type of sale mm -hmm. so i had that background and then i went into kind of trying to um like broker special events for a friend of mine he's got this gorgeous townhouse down in greenwich village so i was showing that property i got a little bit of taste of showing real estate especially on the luxury side um and then i jumped into fashion 
And obviously just being in New York, fashion's all around you. So that was always another interest of mine. So mm -hmm. here I am with that sales background, with the fashion um, backgrounds. Um, the marketing just kind of came uh, another piece. It just kind of came secondary. I have a friend mm -hmm. that's really good at photography. I started doing that with him, messing around with Instagram, trying to like, it was almost like a game, trying to see how many followers I could get, how many likes I could get, that kind of thing. Um, yeah. And now with real estate, I can bring all of that stuff together and again, like a game, have it make money for me. So it's, yeah. it's been great. It's it's so fun. <laughs> so your marketing has paid off pretty exponentially for you, even though you didn't even know what you were doing, but on purposely you were marketing yourself and then you created this brand and you're like, okay, here I am. Now I get to put that all in real estate. And that's, that's a huge part of real estate is branding yourself, marketing yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. So now you're a real estate agent in Rhode Island. You took the switch, which is one of the better decisions that you made for your career because you were able to now niche down into a particular type of clientele. You're selling what yeah. multifamilies for the most part. How yeah, many for the majority, yeah. How many did you sell last month? You told me some crazy number. Oh, th well, it's this month. I have, um, so I, yeah. So the total for this month is going to be eight. So I have two left to go for this month. We'll see if they end up closing this month. One, one is supposed to close today. I don't know if it's going to, um, but yeah. So today is going to be, should be eight. That's insane. Yeah. Like that's kind I mean, of I'm unheard sorry, of. This month. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me how that went. It when you left real estate in New York city during the pandemic, am I right? Uh, right before it in right before. February of 2020. So it was like when COVID was kind of in China, you know, where you were hearing about yeah. everything going on over there. Yeah. Um, that was when my lease was up. COVID wasn't like a, a huge factor in my decision, but mm -hmm. you know, being in the subways and thinking to myself, like if this you know, runs amok. I don't know if I want to be here. It was kind of like the cherry on top, like get me out of here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's when your real real estate career started. You moved back to Rhode Island. Yeah. And how did that go? Like tell tell everybody what it is to start up as a new real estate agent. Like what it's like. I'd say it's very nerve wracking because yeah. especially, you know, obviously there are some roles that are few and far between, but there are some that are um, you know, salary based or draw based or whatever it is. But mm -hmm. for me, I was going into a hundred percent commission. So again, like it, just like in New York, I was nervous about that. I didn't, in New York, I definitely didn't want to do it, but at least in Rhode Island where I'm from, yeah, I know I have a, um, a good network. I know I have family to fall back on, you know, a, a place to sleep, all that kind of stuff. Some people are more, um, risk tolerant and willing to take that jump. But for me being in Rhode Island, I was more willing to do so than in New York. So it's nerve wracking when you first get in, you're like, where's my first deal going to come from? How long is it going to take me? What do I have to do? Where do I start? Do I door knock? Do I phone call? All of those, all of those things coming together was very, very nerve wracking. But um, the, the first few months I was just kind of, a sponge. I was trying to learn as much as I could, trying to figure out where I should spend my time. Um, my first deal came from one of my really close friends, a, a mutual friend of ours. It oh, was, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And um, that happened through social media. You know, obviously, it's a very good friend of mine, but I knew that if I was going to get my friends and family involved. They mm. needed to actually see that I was doing the work. I, I remember yes. I had started, um, I watched, I was watching a ton of YouTube videos at the time. And one of them was like, go through your phone, your, um, your contacts in your phone and reach out to, um, it was like two letters of the alphabet every day. So it was like, I don't know. It was, it was like random letters, but it was like A and L, one day b and e the next day or whatever so i was doing that for a while okay. and I, I it felt so cheesy to me like as mm -hmm. as like 
as off script as I wanted to make the message, it just still didn't like mesh with me. I felt funny doing it. Just like, Hey, I haven't talked to you in five years, but I'm doing real estate. So it was like, yeah. I didn't have like, there was no value in, you know, me to them. It was just like, I, I was going to sell their house. They, were, they weren't going to get any value out of that. So it felt very cheesy. But so yeah. after doing that, I said to myself, okay, if I just show that I'm doing real estate via social media, mm -hmm. it's going to happen more organically. And that's exactly what happened. My friend ended up reaching out to me on Instagram and saying, hey, you know, me and my girlfriend are actually like ready to buy a house. We'd love to work with you. You're a great friend of ours. You know, we trust you. Even though I hadn't been in the industry a long time, literally not even a month, they were willing to instill their trust in me because they know my work ethic they know how I uh, how I act, like all the all those things. They they trusted me without even seeing experience out of me. So um, right. I was able to get a client very quickly. Um, we found a house within a couple months, closed on it, mm -hmm. um, and then and yeah, you think social media had a lot to, to do with that? Yeah, absolutely, because you know that that's where everybody lives right now. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. easy for people to see what you're doing. Um, you it's know, like it's, your you're resume. Yeah. It's your resume and you're yeah, advertising your to your own sphere of influence without having to do the cheesy stuff, like text everybody in your phone, you know, out of the blue, they mm -hmm. can just see what you're doing organically. Right. So I want to backpedal for a second and I want to know, some advice that you would give any new agents. Cause I get a lot of agents as I work as a coach, they call and they're like, I'm scared as hell to go all commission. I'm really scared. And I know you going back to Rhode Island, you felt a little more supported. And I had a client the other day and he's like, you know, I, I live with my family right now, but eventually he's younger. I'm like, now's the time to do it. You are the most yeah. supported, but he still doesn't want to take the jump from his nine to five to going all commission. And that's a lot of people. Some people, you know, they don't have the support or whatever else. Like, what advice would you give to people who know they can do it, but it's it's the getting there. It's that unknown because all, going all commission is extremely unknown. Yeah, yeah. So I guess if you're somebody in a nine to five, I would consider putting away three months of expenses. Mm -hmm. I was, that was something I was told in New York that resonated with me. I said, oh, that kind of makes sense because, you know, three months expenses, the likelihood of you doing a deal in three months is pretty good if you really hustle for it. So yeah. that would be the first thing. If you're somebody that can't necessarily do that for whatever reason, I would consider, this is something I've thought about a bunch of times. Um, I would consider getting a part-time gig. Leap lining up a part-time gig, leaving mm -hmm. the nine to five, but the part-time gig, make sure it's something that can coincide with real estate. And what I mean by that is a bartending job at a high-end restaurant, mm -hmm. a valet job, where you, something where you're meeting people that have money and buy and sell real estate. Even, right. even if they're not going to be potential clients of yours, they might, they might know somebody that is, mm -hmm. so it can, it can, it can work, you know, it can work with real estate. I know plenty yeah. of people that have done jobs like that and have gotten clients from it down the road or, or those jobs led into real estate, you know, years later, a good friend of mine right. started as a valet met a bunch of guys that were developers, um, real estate agents, uh, investors, you name it. And he, that's where he like grew an inclination to get into real estate. And a bunch of those guys ended up as his clients years later. So it's a good, yeah. um, I don't, I, I'm a strong believer in that. If you want to do real estate, everything you do, you know, should, like work together and have something to do with real estate and um, like poten potentially like generate leads, you know? I agree with you a hundred percent. I think that's great advice because um, I think I posted this on my last podcast that 
this guy, I was listening to this video and this guy, he really likes hockey and he was getting into real estate. And so he started working with a hockey team and I don't know, managing it or something, but also did real estate and they all became his clients and he was yeah. able to mix his passion with real estate. And now he does both. And he's just like a happy camper, right? It's like when yeah. you can mix something that you like, even if it, like you said, high-end restaurant, I'm sure you said that. Cause like you like to go to high-end restaurants. I know you, you like food, you like really good food, things like that. And whatever it is that you like vibe with, mix it together. And right. Yeah, exactly. Like you said, if you're not in a position to go all in on real estate, but you want to get out of that nine to five, it's baby steps. And yeah. if you need to get a part-time job, because you can always fall back on that nine to five, right? Yep. But that's really not the option here. But we want to take baby steps towards becoming that full-time real estate agent yeah. if that's really what you want to do. So I think that's really great advice. And um, I want to go back to the marketing. And since you did such a good job on your marketing, almost happenstance, just from fashion and wanting to show off fashion and attracting people in that way. When it comes to branding yourself, what advice do you have when it comes to working up the courage to posting on social media? Because, you know, it can get a lot of fear of judgment and fear, a lot of fears yeah. around that, right? How did you get into it and just posting consistently and posting stuff that you want to post? And what are the, tr what are the things that you go through to want to post more, but you feel that you can't or you don't want to in all honesty and what advice do you have around that? Yeah. Um, in terms of building up the courage, I guess you have to start with creating content that you personally enjoy and appreciate. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you're just throwing up something that you don't really care about, that you're not interested in, you, you're never going to appreciate it. It's like leaving the house. If, if, if you leave the house and you're wearing an outfit that you don't like, you're not going to walk down the street and, and have confidence. You know, you need to be wearing something that you're like super impressed with, with yourself, you know, and you, you can go outside and be like, I look great today. And when you walk down the street and you see people and you smile at them, you know, you look good. So it's the same thing with posting on mm -hmm. social media. If you throw up a picture and you think to yourself, this is a fire picture when you post that you're not going to have any regrets you know and the Regardless second step of the is, likes yeah exactly that's where people that's where step, people get a little upset they're like i didn't get enough likes i didn't generate enough yeah. likes how do you yeah. get past that right you just have to do it you just right. it it's you know everybody says that but you just have to post it because yeah, for you it's one thing that's built in definitely built into the instagram algorithm is consistency the more you mm -hmm. post the more interactions you're going to get, the more eyes you're going to get on them. So your first few posts, probably your first 10 posts are not going to get a lot of traction. They're just simply not, unless you have like a very strong following as it is. And mm -hmm. even my stuff, I, I have a reasonable following, but I just posted a video the other day that I thought was absolutely incredible. I do think it's really, really good. Yeah. I only ended up getting like, a hundred and something likes on it because I haven't been posting that consistently, mm -hmm. but I'm not discouraged by it. I know why it happened. I know it was really good, but right. it's just, it's a lot of it has to do with the algorithm. So mm -hmm. you can't post and expect a ton of likes just because it's like a really good photo. It does need to be a good photo because in, especially Instagram, they, um, they appreciate good content you can't throw up a blurry picture and expect it to go viral it's never going to happen they want right. to see really good content so they build that into their algorithms yeah um but yeah even if it is good you still need consistency for them to reward you with more eyes on your stuff mm -hmm. you know that the more that you use their app the more they're going to reward you so pretty much what you're saying is consistency is key and you got to stop caring what other people think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you just because have to do it. You do because it's your business and your business is going to revolve around your branding. And at the very end of the day, it's like, what if somebody fact checks you? They want to be able to go look at your Instagram, which is essentially yeah. a portfolio, especially this day and age. And they want to be able to see, even if it only has 13 likes, they want to yeah. be able to see you. 
authentically yeah, yeah, yeah. and genuinely. Who am I dealing with? Who am I working with? They know exactly. when they see Mike, what they get is he'll probably bring his clients out to a fine dining restaurant. He will probably be dressed really sharp and he will probably really care about just high end, good quality type of stuff because that's what you portray. And that's your brand. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And another thing too, I, I have to say this. I have yeah. to say this. Say it. Agents, you, you're never, ever, ever going to gain traction by just posting cookie cutter, sold, coming soon, pending. It's so bland. Think about it. Your yep. network, say you have a thousand followers. Of that thousand, probably 50 to 100 are even considering buying or selling real estate. Mm -hmm. How about that other 900? That other 900 will probably buy or sell real estate down the road, but right now that's the last thing on their mind. They don't care to see all that stuff, but you, you want them as clients down the road. So you need to consider those 900 followers at all times as well, because eventually they're going to want to reach out to you. Yeah, it's good to, to sh show your wins and your losses and stuff. But mm -hmm. I would consider, like, I post that stuff on my story because it's it's one and done. If they see it, great. They, they see I sold something, blah, blah, blah. But in terms of um, feed posts and consistent story posts, mm -hmm. you want to make it stuff that's interesting to everyone that's following you. One, mm -hmm. that's how you're going to get more um, – interaction and interactions and engagement on social media itself. But two, that's how you're going to keep your following engaged throughout the life cycle of your career. And they'll be more inclined to continue watching, uh, keeping an eye on your social media. And two, they'll be more inclined to actually reach out to you when the time comes because right. they, they, you're top of mind to them. They know that you're posting good content on social media, you're actively hustling and doing your job well, mm -hmm. and they see that you're doing cool stuff. So they're like, oh, you know, this real estate agent, oh, he was over here the other day. You know, he's at the Capitol right. Grill. It looks like he's doing really well. You know, yeah. it, it, it all, it all, you know, comes together. And because they know who you are, right? Like, I always think about like movie stars, right? Like my favorite's Matthew McConaughey. I love him. And, but when he puts himself on display, I feel like I know him. I like yeah. him. I want to hang out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. That's yeah, yeah. what you want to display too. Like you want to be likable. You want these people to hang out with you. And it doesn't mean you're going to vibrate with everybody. You're just yeah. not. You're not everybody's piece of pie. But you're a large audience's people, piece of pie. You've got all these followers for a reason. They want to see you. They want to get to know you. They want to know what you're up to. Yeah. That's why they follow you. So if you can connect and engage with them more on a personal level, in real estate, you don't just sell houses. Like you sell yourself. Yeah. Right? I agree. So yeah, that's huge. It. That's great advice because, man... That's what people miss out on. How boring is it when you look at those profiles and you're just like, okay, another uh, one sold, it's great. I try to follow. It gets old. I try to follow almost, honestly, almost every Rhode Island real estate agent mm -hmm. just to kind of see what they're up to. Obviously, I, I like to see what houses they're selling, what um, you know, what new listings they have and stuff like that. But I just yeah. kind of like to see what they're about and how they market themselves and stuff. And it's just, it's all the same stuff. It's new listing. This is the, this is the gift I bought my clients for the closing. It's right. different stuff, but it's all the same stuff. You, yeah. you, you just have to show more personality. You have yes. to, because yes. in real estate people, they want to work with somebody that they're, they're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. When they walk in a house that you presented them, you know, you don't want to be working with somebody that you're uncomfortable to to say to them, you know, oh, this isn't the house for me. You know, I see so many times agents walk into a house with a client they don't necessarily know too well. And it's so stuffy. It's so, so stuffy. And I can almost tell that they're like itching to be working with an agent that they're friends with. And, right. and it's crazy because everybody knows a real estate agent, but for whatever reason, those buyers or those sellers decided to work with this agent because maybe 
their parents recommended them to them or whatever it is. But if you're an agent in their network, show it on social media, you know, like just hint at them that you're there and they'll be more inclined to work with you. Right. Right. So then the first time when people think of real estate, you want them to think of you. And would you agree that people are more apt to buy something when they're comfortable with you, right? Because you're dealing with a lot of money. I talk about this a lot. Like in some cases you're putting down tens of thousands of dollars and to put that amount of money down, we see this often where like clients will get nervous come time to put the ring on the finger, right? Yeah. When, when to commit because they're like, shoot, I'm really doing this. And they'll think of any excuse. Oh, the gutter, this, the tile floor, that I want this fixed. I want that fixed because they're looking for any reason not to do it, but the more comfortable and the more they trust you, the easier the process will become. So just showing your personality and being a real person and letting them know like, Hey, listen, you can trust me. It's okay. I'm not just a salesperson. I'm not just trying to take your money. Like I'm trying to actually connect with you and find you the best thing for you. And that's why they say serve, don't sell in this industry. Feel comfortable. They want to feel like you're, you have their best interests at heart. You know, it's funny you say all that because I, I went to a um, networking event not too long ago and I was chatting with this younger agent and, you know, I was asking him how his month was going. He said, Man, I just had a house fall under contract. My buyer got cold feet. They went through the inspection and, you know, this was wrong with the house and that was wrong with the house. He said, you know, there wasn't anything crazy, you know, uh, you know, super major wrong with the house, but it was just a bunch of little things. He said, I went through all the rebuttals and I still couldn't get them to go through. Mm. And in my head, literally the same day, I also had a house fall under uh, out of contract for the exact same reason. My buyers just, they did not love the house anymore. They went through it. It was a little too much for them to handle. They didn't want to have to go through all like, you know, the handyman tasks and stuff. And Mm -hmm. I just told them throughout the, uh, throughout the inspection, I said, I can get your money back. If, If this isn't the one we'll, we'll break out of escrow. I'll get your yes. deposit back and we'll move on. Mm-hmm. I didn't try a single rebuttal. Ob- obviously, you know, I, I said to them, you know, this is an easy fix, blah, blah, blah. But mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to sell them back into the deal. That they didn't want. That right. they didn't want. Yeah. You know, so. Or maybe me, weren't ready for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To me, him saying that to me was you're kind of trying to push them into something that they weren't ready for. Mm. So it's, you're right. Like you said, it's not always about selling. Yeah. You know, it's about taking the time and serving your clients. And again, like you said, like just you letting them know, like, Hey, I'm with you. You don't like this. Then I don't like it for you either because I want you to love it. My name is on this contract with you. I want you to refer me to other people. So, but I want you to love it. I don't want you to buy the house and be like, damn it, you know, and then have a bad taste in your mouth. I'm yeah. here for you. And I know that when the stars align, meaning you have to be ready, you have to love it. You have to feel comfortable. You have to trust in every single thing that's going on in this process in order for you to make this decision. It's not a matter of if you will, it's a matter of when you will. Yeah. And I want you to do it when you're ready because otherwise, that's not how we grow a business. That's what makes a good real estate agent. When you show people who you are and you're genuine with what you're doing. Yeah. Right. I agree. Yeah. So thanks for confirming that. But I want to get into how you got into your niche market because I preach on that a lot and eventually it takes time. And I want to know how much time it kind of took you to find that market because you work mostly with multifamilies, which has exploded your business for you personally, because especially at this time when everybody wants to invest, like it's a big boom, everybody wants to invest right now, which is great for you. But now they know they can go to Mike for multifamilies. How'd you get into that? Yeah. um, Honestly, where should I start with this? So, well, my first client, I knew he wanted to buy a duplex. 
Um, and even prior to getting into real estate myself, I was always interested in purchasing multifamilies. I have friends that had bought them in the past. Um, so I was, I've been interested in it. I knew a little about it or, or I knew enough about it. Um, so right off the bat, we started getting going, looking at investment properties. Um, we sold that first one. At the time I was with Keller Williams working for a team and right at shortly after, honestly, prior to closing that deal, I knew Keller Williams wasn't the spot for me. I knew I needed to be somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was considering going elsewhere. I had another client also looking for a multifamily. Um, and we started going on the hunt and, uh, I, we, I saw this one house that was my friend's father's listing. So I called him up and right off the bat, he's like, I'm on a golf course in Florida. I want to be doing more of this. I'm looking for somebody to, to join my team, basically. This is my, my current broker, Frank. He's the best. Right. Um, so sat down with him that week. He told me about what he does. I said, okay, where do I sign? So started working with him a week later. His niche has always been in investment properties because he's always been an investor himself. His father was an agent before him. He's been doing it for 40 plus years. Um, so honestly, it just kind of fell into my lap. Um, uh, you know, I guess through curiosity, it, it really happened because um, it was something I was always interested in. My first few clients happened to be looking for investment properties and it just kind of happened that way. Um, yeah, so his, his clientele is basically large portfolio investors who always have something they're looking to buy or looking to sell. And I thought to myself, you know, this is, this is a great niche to be in because the lifetime value, the LTV of these relationships are much greater than all of these single family buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. You can spend just the same amount of time, if not less with these clients that have large portfolios as you do somebody that owns one single family house, maybe you'll get a second or third out of them, um, you know, down the road. Whereas with these portfolio clients, (laughs) you know, you can get, 10, 20 out of them. Right. In right. A lifetime, you know? So, um, and I mean, given my background in executive recruiting, I think I, my, with my business acumen, I can build relationships with them very easily. It comes natural to me. Um, I don't know. So I, I just kind of, stumbled into it and here I am and I absolutely love it. I think it's the best spot for me. Uh, So yeah. Yeah. You're killing it in that space. I think that's awesome that you found your niche because it's a hard thing to do. And that's what I work a lot with clients too, is finding a good brokerage that works well for you straight off the bat because you don't want to waste any time. So, I mean, you kind of already expressed it, but can you just kind of tell everybody again, like how important it is to find a good brokerage that works for you and that aligns with your goals so that you can really get started straight away. Because yeah. you found Frank a little further down the line, but imagine if you found him sooner, how much faster you could have got started too. Yeah. So I, I actually, um, you know, I was actually listening to a podcast the other day with Jason Oppenheim from the Oppenheim group song Sunset. And I agree with him when he says it's not so much the brokerage, but it's the broker you're with. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest finding a broker that is, has been crushing it. Somebody, Mm -hmm. somebody you can learn from because when you think of, you know, finding a good brokerage, okay, what's a good brokerage? Keller Williams is they're massive century 21, massive Mm -hmm. cold wall banker. All these firms, yeah, they're good brokerages. They've built phenomenal names for themselves, but they're really good at, you know, they're big businesses. They're really good at making their own money. They're not necessarily phenomenal in making you money, 
yeah, you can if you really hustle in those environments, but it's more important that you find a broker that you can learn from and potentially, you know, work some of their deals with because that Mm -hmm. the experience is what's most important. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to work a lot of Frank's deals this past year. And that has helped me tremendously because, you know, typically I think a first year agent does, you know, less than five, I think it's like five to eight deals. Yeah. You know, I've done so much more than that in my first year. So my, my learning curve has happened so much faster. I've seen way more um, wins and losses in such a short amount of time. I have way more to speak to. I've seen all types of different houses in just a short amount of time, you know? So I think it's really, really important that you find a broker that you have synergy with and can feed off of, learn and grow from. Um, I think that's what's most important. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is your first full year. Am I right? Yeah. So uh, I started full-time in, as an agent. Yeah. I started in October 2020. So yeah, this is my first full year. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cause I start a lot of my new agents with um, companies that, especially depending on their goals, but who provide the most support, support and guidance, because like you said, like you can't put a price on knowledge. And you said the same thing when you first started, you were like a sponge and you took that time and you knew that's what you needed in order to spring forward. And now in your first year, I mean, just this month, you've got eight deals. in. I mean, that's kind of, it's almost unheard of. It's incredible to be able to be at that place in your first year. Cause like you said, new agents, they don't typically get that many deals in. So I want to ask you, what are your goals in real estate, long-term and short-term? Mm, so it, it's been shifting and morphing um, since even before I really got started. Um, for me, being an agent and being in real estate sales um, is building the foundation to what's next. Um, I want to start investing, obviously, in real estate myself, but I don't really know what asset class I want to hop into, whether it's multifamily or like commercial multifamily, um, retail, industrial. I don't really know what that's going to look like. Um, Storage has been of interest to me. That is all, that's what's been changing because I see Mm -hmm. so much of this. I have so many clients that do different types of things. Um, Mm -hmm. so right now I'm just really keeping my eyes out on it all. I'd like to get into development at some point as well, probably on the luxury side, because that's kind of where my passion is in real estate. Mm -hmm. Um, luxury. that's, yeah, that's like 10 year goal. Um, more of like a passion project. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I do love sales. So I will always have my real estate license. I don't know how much I'm going to be doing in 20, 30 years, but I'll have the license and at least be doing, I'll be good for at least, you know, a few deals here and there, um, no matter what else I'm doing. So you're in real estate for the long run and with investing on the side. Cause I know last time we spoke, you wanted to buy something in Florida. You wanted to buy something all over. Yeah. You had different properties oh, for yeah. yourself and all that good yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, My, the, yeah. I mean, the long-term goal is to be an investor in, you know. Right. Financial freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal. Yeah. Yeah. That's a typical real estate agent goal, I feel like. So. Yeah, you know, cool. I want a portfolio of short-term rentals. That's, yeah. again, that's, that's more of like, like a life hack for me. Mm-hmm. I love the short-term rental idea because – you can own a house in Malibu, rent it out for most of the year and go use it for a couple weeks out of the year. You know, same right. thing with Austin, Texas, Florida, you name it. Um, right. That, you know, that I'd be less interested in the actual return as opposed to the actual enjoyment you get out of it. You mm-hmm. know, moral of the story is real estate agents typically want flexibility, freedom, growth portfolios that's why a lot of us get into it we want freedom essentially we want to be able to live our life the way we want to live it 
Yeah. And that's the cool thing is that's how you get started. You become a real estate agent. Now you work when you want to and because you want to, although you're probably working all the time. Like how often are you mm-hmm. making sure your phone's on loud in your pocket, right? Yeah. Put exactly. it down for an hour. You got so many texts and calls. That's just how it goes. But I mean, it's because you want to. It's like freedom of expression in a way. Because then yeah. you carry that over into like social media and marketing, like we spoke about. If we can kind of summarize now, it's like carry that over into marketing and you're like, wow, now I get to express myself how I want to. I'm not kept in this box and have to work for a company and only market my company or whatever the case may be. Now I get to market myself, who I yeah. truly am as a real estate agent. And yeah. then you carry that through and then you get to kind of create the life that you want. And I feel like that's how life should be lived. It's like, depending on who you are and what you want, I suppose. But the hurdles to get over is the sitting in the unknown, is the going all commission. It's all of that stuff, which can be a little scary, but it's nice to hear stories like yourself and other stories that can say like, hey, listen, you can do it. But this is how you do it. You take baby steps or you go all in and you just trust yourself because that's the point of being all commissioned. Like how much do you have to trust yourself? Every beginning of the month, you're like, well, let's start over all again. I got to put all my trust in myself and my skills and all the steps that I've taken to become who I am now to know I'm going to make money this month. Yeah. I've got my own back now. Mm -hmm. It's fun. It's exciting. Once you start getting going, It's like a game. It really is. It's like, who can I meet this month? What can I line up? You know, what's my Mm -hmm. pipeline looking like? Once you get going, it is really fun. It really is. Right. Well, life is like a game. If you think about it, it's just like, we got to pass the first level to make it to the next. It's like the self growth journey in and of real estate is like the craziest part about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just so much goes into it. So as we end our interview, thank you so much for answering all my questions. Absolutely. I think it was really helpful for any other real estate agents who are listening to this. What any last advice or any last type of motivation for any of these new agents or any real estate agents who are looking to grow in their business or get started in the industry? Yeah. Honestly, to, to bounce back on what we just chatted about, just have fun with it. Do things that you're passionate about outside of real estate, whatever it is. If you're into golf, tennis, um, art, you name it. Do Mm -hmm. those things that make you happy. And while you're doing them, just have a conversation about real estate. You know, Mm -hmm. if let people know what you're about, what you're interested in, what you do for work. And that's how you'll organically get clients, get listings, um, and that's, and that's how you'll enjoy it. You know, mm-hmm. that's where it really gets fun is when you're doing what you love to do, you're working quote unquote, and you're making money, you know, it yeah. all comes together so beautifully if you do it the right way. So just follow your passions, always be open to having a conversation about real estate and you'll do just fine. Amazing. Yeah. That's helpful. Moral of the story. Don't be a salesperson. Just be a person. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just, you know, organic is the key word here. Just, it all should just flow and be natural. The conversations, the interactions, um, you know, when you build relationships that should be organic, it shouldn't be forced at all. It'll all flow. Yeah. Be happy. Well, where can anybody find you if they need a real estate agent in Rhode Island? Um, Instagram, meet me on Instagram. What Mike is your Corey, Instagram? M-I-K-E, M-I-K-E-F-O-R-T-E. Awesome. 